It's pretty common knowledge that dogs and chocolate don't mix, despite what your dog might tell you. Humans can eat chocolate without ill effects, aside from putting on a few pounds. So what exactly is the problem? Right, chocolate is made from cocoa beans, the seeds of the cacao tree, or to use its full name, Theobroma cacao. The Theobroma part of the name hints at the main issue. Cocoa beans contain both caffeine and theobromine. These are the problem substances. Different chocolates have different amounts of cocoa, and as you might imagine, powdered cocoa has the highest concentration of the problematic compounds, followed by dark chocolate. Milk chocolate isn't as bad, and white chocolate doesn't pose any kind of threat due to the lack of cocoa mass. It's basically milk, cocoa butter, and sugar. The sugar content in white chocolate won't do your dog any favours, but it won't require an emergency trip to the vets if your dog eats your milky bar. Both caffeine and theobromine are in fact toxic to humans. We are just a lot more efficient at processing them, so they don't stick around in our system. To put it into context, we would need to eat around 8 kilos of dark chocolate to be in danger. Dogs, however, are not so lucky. They don't process these substances as quickly as we do, so they build up and linger in their systems, causing a myriad of issues. A medium-sized dog would only need to eat around a kilo for a lethal dose. The effects of these substances can range from mild, such as vomiting, restlessness, loss of coordination, and excessive thirst, to much more severe, such as overheating, central nervous system disruption, seizures, and an irregular heartbeat. That's a few of the symptoms, but why exactly do they happen? There's more than one mechanism at play here, so let's take a look. Both caffeine and theobromine are stimulants, and these act by binding with and inhibiting adenosine receptors. These receptors play a role in the regulation of the heart, muscles, as well as general alertness. This has a multitude of effects, the severity of which is dependent on the amount of toxins in the bloodstream. Small doses will increase the heart rate, cause the dog to be restless, unusually thirsty, and have some gastric distress. Larger doses will increase the heart rate, cause an irregular heartbeat, induce shaking, panting, and hypothermia. Larger doses still can cause seizures, kidney failure, and even death. Treatment for chocolate toxicosis focuses on two main areas decontamination and stabilisation. The effects on the heart can be partially counteracted with medications. Hypothermia can be counteracted with both medication and physically cooling the dog. Removal of the toxic compounds is the other priority. Inducing vomiting and pumping the dog's stomach can remove the offending chocolate, stopping further uptake of the toxic compounds. Encouraging urine production can also help to flush the toxins through the dog's system faster. Administering activated charcoal is another mainstay of treatment, as this binds to and absorbs the toxins, inhibiting uptake into the body. The dog will eventually process the toxic compounds, expelling them in its urine, so it's a case of keeping the dog stable while this happens. So that's chocolate. Bad for dogs. Really bad for dogs. But what else shouldn't dogs be eating? A full list is available in the description, as it's rather extensive, but here are a few examples. Bread dough will ferment in the dog's stomach, creating ethanol, which can lead to alcohol poisoning. Macadamia nuts, whilst not fatal, will generate similar symptoms to chocolate. Curiously, the reaction seems to be unique to dogs, while no other mammals appear to have any significant reaction. Raisins and grapes are a bit of a mixed bag. Some dogs seem to be just fine with them, whereas others can suffer from kidney failure and death, even after minimal consumption. Basically, don't risk it. Xylitol, a sugar substitute often used in chewing gum and dental mints, may seem innocuous at first, but it's deadly for dogs. It can cause hypoglycemia, which is a very low blood sugar level. This can lead to seizures and severe liver damage. Whilst dogs aren't the only creatures that can have problems with food that we can eat without issue, they are the ones that we need to look out for the most, due to their seafood diet. Dogs eat food, and they eat it. The moral of the story is, if you have a dog, keep your food safe, so you can keep your dog safe.